Hello guys. So in this video, we will understand the derivatives of activation functions in bit detailed way. Okay. So we will understand how the activation functions actually affects the learning of neural networks and internally how they affect the updates of the gradients. Okay. So let us start. So here I have considered the updates for layer 2. So basically when I say layer 2, it's hidden layer 2. Okay. So we have to update the weights and biases associated with that particular layer and I have named it as W2 and B2. Okay. So these are the equations associated with layer 2 here. So we have to update DW2. We have to com compute DW2. This is also called as gradient with respect to gradient of weights 2 and DB2 gradients of bias 2. Okay. So in order to compute this, we need this particular term here DZ2. Correct. So, in order to calculate dz2, this is the formula. So, how we know these are the formulas? Uh, I have derived these all these equations in my another video. So, if you haven't watched that, please go back and watch that and then come back to this. Okay. So, now that we know that these are the equations required in order to update the weights and biases of layer 2, let us start from the beginning. So, here I have the equation for dz2. So, what is this z? Z2, Z2 is just the linear combination of weights at layer 2, output from the previous layer that is activations from the previous layer layer 1 plus we will add the bias to it B2. Okay, So this is Z2. Now this DZ2 is nothing but derivative of this particular Z2. Okay, So this particular DZ2 is given by this particular equation W3 transpose matrix multiplication with DZ3 element wise multiplication with derivative of the particular activation function at the second layer with respect to z2. So, I have written it as f2 prime of z2 so or f2 dash of z2. Okay. So, let us assume that f2 f2 is a tan h function. Okay. So, hyperbolic tangent is our activation function for layer 2. Okay. And f2 dash or f2 prime will be the derivative of tan h function. Okay. So, here I have plotted the derivative of tan h function. So, this is derivative of tan h. Okay. So, I will give you the code in the description below uh, where you can plot the derivatives of tan h and sigmoid functions. Okay. So, right now let us understand this particular thing. So, this is z2 and this is f2 prime of z2 where f2 is our tan h and f2 prime is derivative of tan h. Now what happens? So if z2 is some large value, okay. So if z2 happens to be some large value, so let's say greater than 5 or greater than 10, this f2 prime of z2 or derivative of tan h with respect to that particular value z2 will be close to 0. You can see it from this particular area, right? So, it is close to 0, correct? Correct? So, since f2 prime of z2 is close to 0, this particular term here, dz2 will be close to 0, correct? Because we are multiplying this particular matrix multiplication result with f2 prime of z2 and our f2 prime of z2 is close to 0. So, dz2 will be close to 0. Correct. Since dz2 is close to 0, what happens to this update? So, this is nothing but dw2 is equal to 1 by m into, this is some very small value. We can treat it as almost equal to 0 and we are doing matrix multiplication with a1 transpose. Correct. So, this whole term dw2 will be so small, so negligible that it will be close to 0. So, we can write it as negligible value negligible okay so this particular weight gradient so this is the gradient of weights 2 right so when i say dw2 these are the gradients gradients of w2 weights at layer 2 so now that we have computed gradients of weights 2 what is our formula to update the weights at layer 2 so new weights w2 new is equal to w2 old minus alpha into dw2 correct 
So we already know this. How? Because it's the formula for gradient descent update. Correct. So since dW2 is close to zero or negligible, this W2 new will be almost equal to W2 old. Correct. Okay. Hope you guys are following me here. So since these two are almost similar, so let's say if W2 new is 2.000001 and W2 old is 2. So hardly there is any update in the weights right after this particular gradient update. So what happens? There will be no weights updates, no W2 updates. And since there are no W2 updates, there will be no learning, no learning at layer 2 of that particular neural network. So this is the case with W2. So what is the effect on B2? So if you see this particular formula here, we B2 is updated as B2 new is equal to b2 old minus alpha into db2 correct so now we need to know what is db2 so db2 is given by this particular formula 1 by m into summation of dz2 correct so since we already know this dz2 is close to 0 this db2 will also be close to 0 okay since db2 is close to 0 this b2 new will almost be same as b2 old correct Okay, so again there is no update. There is no update for the bias also. So, if this is the case, B2 and W2 at each iteration will remain same if Z2 happens to be a large value. Happens to be a large value. Correct? So, what happens in this case? Since B2 and W2 remains same, Z2 computation will remain same. Why? Because Z2 is computed as W2 into A1 plus B2. Correct? Okay. So, for now, let us ignore A1. That's the activation from previous layer. So, we can think that previous layer also has similar situation. Okay. Where we are getting value dz1 is some large value and we are getting almost similar updates here okay so since z2 is computed using w2 and b2 as variables and during each iteration of gradient descent or back propagation this w2 and b2 are not getting updated this z2 will remain same at each iteration Correct. Since Z2 remains same at each iteration, A2 should also remain same. Correct. Why? Because A2 is applying activation on this Z2. Correct. So, since the values remain same, neural network with this particular setup never learns a thing. Never learns. If we are facing this particular situation during the beginning of the training phase, we will end up just iterating it multiple times and we will never learn. Our neural network never learns. Okay. So that's why if you look at this particular video, this is the derivative of tan h as I already told you. We, if we have to update the weights and biases at those particular layers where we are having these specific activation functions, we want the values to be small. So, if we want to have the good updates on the gradients or the weights and biases, we want the value of Z2 to be somewhere in this particular region. Correct? So, this particular region. Correct? So that we will get greater gradients, we will have greater slopes. So, our weights updates W2 equal to W2 minus alpha into DW2. This will be some large value. So, this will be traded off with the learning rate. It will be a small value. We will see some updates during each iteration of the weights. Correct. So, now you have understood, hope you have understood this with respect to tan h. So, if you look at the sigmoid gradients, okay. So, let me just quickly get the sigmoid gradients as well here. Give me a second. 
So I'm just copying it. I have it here. So sigmoid gradients actually range from 0 and 0 0.25. Range between 0 and 0 0.25. Okay. So our tan s gradients range from 0 to 1. Right. So this is how sigmoid gradient looks like. Derivative of sigmoid. Okay. So if you see here, even the larger values are a problem for sigmoid activation functions also if we are considering the derivatives okay if we are considering the derivatives of sigmoid activation function larger the value if you treat this as some value z and this as f prime of z that is sigmoid derivative of z so the larger values with respect to z is also a problem when we are using sigmoid activation function also in this case also derivative of this particular thing will be close to zero if z is large okay so that's why whenever we pass on the values from one layer to other layer so quickly let me quickly draw the layers here right so this is layer one layer two layer three and we pass on these functions the outputs of each one each layer as inputs to our next layer correct so these values a1 a2s a3s and all if they are small it will help us in the better convergence and faster convergence okay so that's why we use something called as layer normalization layer normalization so what happens we will scale down the values of activations at each layer probably between 0 and 1 or between minus 1 and plus 1 okay so it will be centered if we want the mean to be centered around 0 we will use we usually scale the values between minus 1 and plus 1 but there is no harm even if you scale the values between 0 and 1 we want the values of these activations at each and every layer should be small okay why so you have already seen right for <coughs> z2 computation is given as w2 into a2 plus b2 so if this happens to be small the entire values z2 will be small correct and in this case deriving the derivative of f2 with respect to z2 will not be a problem we will not see it getting close to zero and so the updates for w2 and b2 will be some considerable value so we can see some updates in w2 and b2 and we will see the difference in the final error or cost okay so this is how the selection of activation functions and the values associated with each of the layers activation layers layers values of the activations in each neural network layer affects the learning of neural network okay so hope you have got the gist of what i am trying to say here uh, so the values of each of the neural network layers should be small enough so that we will have some derivative value for that particular specific activation function so that we will be able to compute the gradients and then we will be able to update the weights and biases associated with each of the neural network layers so that we will have some meaningful learning okay so hopefully i have conveyed you the message and you are clear on this particular thing if you have any questions please reach out to me in comment section and if you have got any feedback please post that in comment sections I will be happy to help you okay so if you haven't liked this video please give it a thumbs up if you like the content and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe share it among your peers who wants to learn all these concepts in depth okay so that's it for this video guys till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye